This is a 2020 Tesla Model 3. I just got the update for full self-driving version 12.3.3 in Ontario, Canada. So we're gonna test this out. Is it good enough to be a robo taxi? Is it any better than version 11? And if so, how much better? Does it drive like a human? We've seen people posting that they've had zero interventions for multiple hours of driving. We've got a route I'm parked right now. So if I put the car into drive and start the navigation route, Okay, so it pulls out of a parking space on the side of the road perfectly fine. And we're on our way. We've got an unprotected left turn coming up. It's a one-way stop, but not on our side. So the car should just make a left turn without any issues. And it is slowing down quite a lot, but it is also making this turn perfectly. So now we have a left turn onto a quite a busy road one of the busiest roads in the city. It's also 5.37 p.m., so it's in the middle of rush hour. We're creeping up a little to get some visibility, which is definitely what a human would do. Now keep in mind, this is still a supervised version of full self-driving, so I'm not allowed to uh, just do whatever I want. I need to be paying attention to the road at all times in case it does make a mistake. So if you are testing out full self-driving, make sure you are attentive. This left turn is going to take quite a long time, but I think there's going to be an opening right here. If it wants to hurry, it can. And that is exactly when we had an opening and the car decided to go perfect. The car actually does have an advantage over human drivers in a sense because it has eight cameras pointing all around the car. It should have a lot more vision than a human with two eyes that can only look in one direction at a time. We're a little bit close to this ambulance. I wouldn't say we're dangerously close, but it's a little more close than I would get if I was driving. A little too close for comfort. So the goal with this technology from Tesla is to eventually make these cars completely autonomous to take you from point A to point B, right from your driveway to your destination, or if you don't have a car, it should be able to take you from point A to point B, no matter where you're going. So this is what we're testing out today. Can it already do that? I'm gonna say that it probably cannot. However, it has not made any mistakes yet. So far, it is staying within the lanes, right in the center of the lane, actually. And it feels smooth. It feels like a real driver. In version 11, there were times when the steering wheel would jerk and jolt and it just felt a little bit scary as if the car was unsure about what it was doing. So far, in this drive, it feels pretty smooth. The car is also able to recognize stoplights, street signs, things like this. So it can tell that this street light is green and that we can go. It's gonna make a left turn here and it so far as pulling into the lane perfectly. There are no cars coming, so it should go. And it's gonna hesitate, and I'm gonna push the accelerator to make it go because that truck was coming and I do not wanna get hit by a semi-truck. So that's the first time where I would say so far on this drive that that was non-human-like behavior and it actually got to a point where it was potentially dangerous if I was not paying attention. Now, had I not intervened there and pressed the accelerator, it may have gone by itself, but I'm not gonna take that chance. It's just not worth it right now. That was not a smooth gesture. With version 12.3, Tesla has removed over 300,000 lines of C plus code. Now, this is because the way the car used to be programmed was that it would be coded to stop at the light stay within the lines make a right turn within these set of rules things like this now in version 12 they have the car being trained on end-to-end -end neural nets so it does not need this code basically it experiences these things tesla's computer will look at the videos from good drivers and try to replicate that behavior in the car it's not necessarily trained exactly on road rules so that is why there's an update now, with this woman walking her child, the car stopped well far away from them and kept a lot of space to make it as safe as possible, which I like. Um, I think most drivers would probably do that instead of pulling right up to the line to stop.
Technically, the car should be able to go right now, and it's not going. I have noticed that it is quite hesitant on red lights, although this guy is standing right inside the intersection, so that might be part of the reason why. Okay, now we should go, and we go. I would say at that light, a human driver probably would have went earlier. The car was more hesitant than I think it needed to be, but it's better to be safe than sorry, I guess. But that's one area where the car doesn't necessarily feel like a human. I wouldn't say it's dangerous in any sort of way, so if it was an autonomous vehicle and did that, it'd be okay, but it's a little bit annoying, I think, for the cars behind me just waiting, waiting, waiting when there is an opportunity to go and people have places to go, places to be. And here I am in my Tesla just lollygagging. So based on time of day, driving with the full self-driving software could be a little bit annoying for other people and for the person driving, actually. If I was driving in rush hour traffic, which right now it kind of is, but it's not as busy as it gets, it would be extremely annoying because when you're in those situations as a human, a lot of times you'll just sort of be aggressive and push your way through a scenario because you know the context of that situation and what should work and what uh, should be avoided. The car will take the safe route both ways. So if it's not very busy and you're out for a leisurely drive, that might be fine. You don't mind the car taking a little extra time to get from point A to point B but when it's extremely busy, the car is not going to be as aggressive as a human, I don't think. Some people say that full self-driving is already at a point where it should be able to do everything we need it to do. There's other people online that say that this is five or 10 years away from being operational. There are some people saying that this is the most dangerous thing that you could ever have in a vehicle. I think that in reality, we're somewhere in between where we're not exactly at a point where this is autonomous, but we're also seeing that it is extremely close. People point out Waymo and Waymo is doing a great job. Um, I applaud them on their their accomplishments. The difference between Waymo and Tesla, well, there are a few things. One is that Waymo is stuck to a specific geolocation. It's geo-mapped to be able to operate in a specific area. Outside of that area, the Waymo is pretty much useless and it cannot drive anyone anywhere outside of that geo-fenced area. So, that's one difference. Another difference is that every single Tesla has the capability to be a full self-driving vehicle. A Tesla Model 3 and a Tesla Model Y, they start in the 30,000 range, you know, um, which is about, you know, less than an average vehicle cost, brand new vehicle cost, and it comes with this software. Now, yes, you do have to pay for full self-driving if you want to use it, but that is so much cheaper than a Waymo that, first of all, is geofenced, and secondly, costs way more money for Waymo to produce. Waymo also is not mass producing their vehicles. There are six million Tesla vehicles on the roads globally today, um, of which, you know, all of the ones in North America are able to have full self-driving supervised version installed on the car. So something to keep in mind. Waymo's also use different sensors like LiDAR sensors, radar, and other sensors that cost more money and they are more likely to malfunction. Whereas Tesla simply uses eight cameras, they use all vision and no other sensors are needed for Tesla to be able to complete these tasks of driving. Um, Tesla also is trained in all of North America. So here we are in Windsor, Ontario, a very small city, and we're able to full self-drive from point A to point B pretty much without a lot of interventions. Um, if you put a Waymo in Windsor, Ontario, it is going to be clueless and it is going to have no idea what it's doing. So we're getting very close to reaching our destination now. Destination is Costco. We're not going shopping, unfortunately, but we are just coming here to see how the car does. It's a common destination where people are going, and so how does the car handle if you want to go to Costco? Here we're at a spot where there's no stop sign and it is taking forever to make this turn. Again, probably safer than it needs to be. And here we are pulling into the parking lot of Costco. Okay, this truck just cut us off and didn't stop, but the car allowed him to pass by anyway. So good on the car. I probably would have honked if I was driving because that was uncalled for from the truck, but 
people make mistakes we've all been there and all done that so no big deal the car cannot yet park itself unless I take over and specifically ask it to park for me but that is a feature that some people have on their cars that I have seen. We're heading to our second destination now and we're in a parking lot. So let's see if I start right now, if it will take us out of the parking lot onto the street and to our next destination from here, or if we need to sort of drive ourselves out of the parking lot. It immediately, <laughs> confidently pulls out of that parking spot and looks like it is going to take us right out of the parking lot onto the street. So. This is a huge advancement because version 11 did not do this at all. This is completely new to version 12. Driving nice and slow and nice and safe in the parking lot, about 23 kilometers an hour. One thing the car still does is comes to full stops at every single stop sign, even if nobody is around, which is very annoying, but I'm sure Tesla has to program that in to abide by the law technically, even though nobody really does do that. What's cool about Tesla is that every single vehicle comes with the capability to have full self-driving on it. Everybody's freaking out about Tesla not making their Q1 delivery estimates, but you know, in terms of revenue for Tesla, if full self-driving gets solved and they are able to provide autonomous rides, um, even if it just drives itself, Okay, the car slowed down for absolutely no reason there. That was <laughs> strange. Luckily, there's nobody around. So if they're able to solve full self-driving fully, that is going to bring in so much revenue that it is not going to matter if Tesla ever delivers another vehicle ever again. Furthermore, they're not just going to provide full self-driving for their own vehicles. Elon has already stated on X that there are car companies that would like to license full self-driving software for themselves. Now, if it goes any way, similar to how the NACS charging adapters were adopted by companies. We can expect probably Ford and Rivian to be the first two companies to announce that they are going to license Tesla's full self-driving software. But just because that's the direction that they went with the NACS chargers, it doesn't mean that they will be the first ones that want to license Tesla software. The truth is nobody is even close to Tesla when it comes to full self-driving right now. Does it pass the girlfriend test? Does it pass the wife test? So, babe, does it pass the fiance test? It passes it a bit more than the previous version, but I still got scared, especially when it slows down or I get anxious when it takes too long to make turns and there's people behind us because I just feel like people will get so angry. So it kind of does and kind of does not. If you had to rate out of 10, version 11 and version 12, where do you rate them? Oh, version 11 was a six out of 10. Version 12 is a 7.5 out of 10. Wow, 1.5 might not sound like that much, but if you think about 1.5 compared to six, that's 25% better from the previous version. So if we get 25% better in the next update and the next update and the next update, True. at some point it is going to pass this wife test, the fiance test, it's not there yet, Tesla, but you're getting there. <laughs> yeah. And it passes the wife or fiance test or girlfriend test when the roads aren't as busy. I think part of it might be that you know that I'm not driving, so you're automatically a little bit more cautious. Yeah, you know what? The other day you weren't driving and I didn't realize you weren't driving. And I was completely fine. But the minute you told me you weren't driving, I became really cautious. So... It probably does pass the girlfriend, fiance, slash girlfriend test if the person isn't aware that you're not driving. So there you have it. So I've heard some people also say that they've tested version 12 and they say, I don't see the point of it. It doesn't park for you at the store. It can't pull out of your garage for you and start your trip that way. What I would say to that is the end goal for Tesla is that a lot of people are not even going to own vehicles. Actually, already in big cities, whether we're talking New York or any compact city, a lot of people don't even own a vehicle right now because it's not worth it. They take Uber or taxis or lifts everywhere that they go. So the fact that Tesla cannot yet, let's say, park into a parking spot, it doesn't really matter because, for example, I should be able to send out my vehicle to do autonomous taxi rides and that car only needs to pick somebody up at the side of the road, drop them off, 
at the point that they need to go to, whether that's inside a parking lot or whether that is on the side of the road. And it already seems to be capable of that and more. And I've already seen some people with the update where the car does actually pull into the parking lot and parks itself all in one go. So I'm sure that's coming very soon for me as well. So this intersection right here caused a lot of problems for Tesla full self-driving version 11. We will see how version 12 handles this left turn. I don't know why, it seems like a very standard left turn, but for whatever reason, version 11 had so many problems with this. So um, here we go, it's going to turn green soon and we'll see how this turn goes. And here we go. Smooth like butter. One more thing that I appreciate about version 12 is that I can take my hands off the wheel a little bit. I can look to the right and left a little bit. If I needed to adjust music or something, I can put my hand down here and adjust it. And it's not beeping at me. It's not giving me a hard time. Whereas version 11, I swear, for whatever reason, Tesla programmed it so that if I look to the left or right and glance away from the road or take my hand off for any, like one second, it would beep at me, pay attention to the road. It was so annoying. And I think they fixed this. Let's see how long it actually takes them to tell me to put my hand on the wheel or to check the car. I'm gonna keep looking at the road pretty much all the time because I'm supposed to be supervising this. So for those of you at home watching, if you have this update, you're going to try it. This is for testing purposes only and I don't recommend that you take your hand off the wheel. I'm doing it <laughs> for science. I think it's probably been a good 15 to 20 seconds and it is not bothering me to put my hand back on the wheel. And here we go. Now it says apply slight turning force to the steering wheel. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And there it goes. This is a great spot as well for us to see the driving visualizations here. Look at all the data that Tesla has. It can probably see more of what's going on than I can at this moment. There's a truck coming from the right and another car behind it that I did not even see. Okay, right there it took the car a second to pick which lane it wanted to go into and it kind of hovered in the middle of them for a little longer than I was comfortable for. That being said, it did pick the right lane and it didn't cause any problems for anyone around us. Look at that Tesla. That's sick. Where version 12 is smoother is where it just did something that is so subtle that only somebody who experienced version 11 would know the difference with. So as soon as a dotted line appears on the road where you can enter into a different lane, the car is very quick to get over into that lane on version 12. Version 11 would wait until after the dotted line started and then it would take time to almost, it felt like processing maybe, and then it would shift over, which sometimes made it feel too late or a little bit unnatural. Version 12 did it super smoothly and it's something that I think people may not even recognize is an improvement if they've never tried the software. Here we're actually coming up to a right turning lane and the car got over at the last second to get into the straight lane to stay on route. Now, as a human, I saw that right turning lane a mile ahead, and I wish that's something the car would see. It is better than version 11 still in that respect, but there's some improvement that needs to be made there to feel more natural. You know what's nice about full self-driving too is that I don't need to focus as strong on the road as I would if I was driving myself. So if you're going on a long drive for an hour, two hours, or even four hours, I've taken this to Toronto and back, it takes the fatigue out of driving. After a four hour drive, I still have a lot of energy. Whereas normally if I were to drive without full self driving in my old car, I would feel tired, like mentally tired after a drive that lasted two hours or four hours. In this car, I feel like I was pretty much a passenger in the vehicle, even though I am staying attentive. You don't have to be as attentive per se as if you're manually making adjustments as you're driving. And here we go at our destination. It's going to pull into the parking lot. A little bit slow, but that's fine. Nobody's around.
We're maneuvering through the parking lot and the car seems to be doing pretty good. I still don't think that it's going to park itself. But I'm curious, there's not really anybody driving in this parking lot we're walking around. What if I just leave it and don't end my trip? What will the car do? Will it just park in front of the business? Or will it keep going? We're now here. And... Okay, so we arrived at our destination. It parked right outside of the business. And it is not parked in a parking spot, but if this was an autonomous taxi ride, let's say, a robo-taxi ride, this would be perfect. As a passenger, I could just hop out of the car right now and it could leave out of the parking lot to go to its next job. Here's a park button and a parking spot. I must shift into reverse, start auto park. Now this is a by permit only a handicapped spot. So obviously I can't stay in this spot, but this is good proof of concept to see if the car can park itself and it's going very slow. This person is wondering oh. what I'm doing and they're getting kind of upset. So I'm just gonna take over and park myself so that they can get through. This is somewhere that Tesla needs to improve because that is very annoying for other drivers. And it makes me feel awkward because I know I'm holding them up. So at least the car tried to park itself. So the fact that this car cannot really park itself extremely confidently yet is surprising to me. And it's kind of disappointing for Tesla because my last vehicle was a 2017 Mercedes and it could do this. That's a seven year old car now. This car is only four years old, plus it gets software updates. This should be something that Tesla can do right now and they cannot do it. It's not the end of the world because it is still very easy to just park myself. I have a rear view camera and two side cameras, so it's pretty easy to just park myself. But this is something I assume Tesla will fix, but I'm very surprised it's not fixed yet in 2024. To summarize this trip, we drove for about 30 minutes, 40 minutes, something like this. We had one instance where I needed to press on the accelerator to encourage the car to go so that we didn't get smushed by a truck. But had I not pressed that, who knows what would have happened. I wasn't about to take the chance, but I assume the car would have been fine. That being said, it's something that I did not feel comfortable with. Other than that, the car pretty much took us from A to B every single time and did a couple of things that maybe were inconvenient, but nothing unsafe other than that one instance. So in 40 minutes of driving with only one time I had to intervene, I think that's fantastic. With the same route on version 11, I think that this 40 minutes of driving probably would have resulted in five or six, maybe even seven interventions. It also would have been less comfortable in the places where it did not intervene. So even though it would have had seven interventions, it also would have been less comfortable and less human-like along the way. So humongous update for version 12. We are one step closer to achieving autonomous driving. We are one step closer to having robo taxis from Tesla. It is not there yet but I do see the light at the end of the tunnel for the first time since 2020 when I acquired this Tesla Model 3. This technology is honestly pretty phenomenal. Like who thought we would have full self-driving cars in 2024? Even a year ago, it just seemed unfathomable that technology would be at this point. Even if you're not going to buy a Tesla, you should try this technology out. Go do a test drive with Tesla. There's a link in my description below where you can click and schedule your test drive. And hey, maybe it will make you want to buy the vehicle too. But even if not, I think it's good for people to experience this and just see how far technology has come. If you want to learn more about Tesla, check out my Tesla playlist right here. I will be adding more to it regularly as well. So hit subscribe if you want to keep up with Tesla and other tech products on a regular basis. We're on the road to 25K, so I'll see you there. Peace.